Sunderland, a one win away from escaping four painful years in the third tier of English football and face a Wickham Wanderers side seeking to return to the Championship at the first time of asking. Welcome to the home of English football and the League One playoff final at Wembley Stadium. Wherever you are watching, glad you could join this outstanding atmosphere. The invention of the playoffs, many believe to be one of our game's finest moves. They provide gripping drama and nerve-wracking experience for the fans of both Sunderland and Wickham today. And recent meetings between these clubs suggest we're in for goals. No less than ten in the two league meetings. The last in January at Wickham's Adams Park ended in a 3-3 thriller. Both teams coming into this final in good form despite losing their semi-final second leg at MK Dons. Wickham took a 13-game unbeaten run into that match. Sutherland is defending an unbeaten 15-game run here, including the win and draw over two legs in the semi-final against Sheffield Wednesday. Since Alex Neal took over at Sunderland in February, just one defeat in 17 games under his stewardship. He's won promotion in the past with Hamilton in Scotland and with Norwich City. He knows how to get the job done and he certainly tightened up Sunderland defensively. You remember that 6-0 defeat perhaps at Bolton Wanderers early in the season, that cost the then Sunderland head coach Lee Johnson his job which brought Alex Neal the opportunity to manage a massive club, a club that has been languishing for too long in the third tier with a massive fan base and their fans outnumbering those of Wickham by more than two to one today. And here's the welcome for the two teams. Well, playing for Sunderland brings its pressures for Wickham. Almost like a free hit for them. They got the final playoff place on the last day of the regular season after a win away at Burton Albion. It was MK Dons thrashing at Plymouth Argyle that helped Wickham to claim that sixth place. Sunderland finished one place above them. But they're used to playing in front of big crowds, Sunderland, week in, week out at their stadium of light. For Wickham, that's not the story. But Sunderland have so often come to Wembley, it's been a curse for them. But they've rather played the occasion and not the game. Two teams about to be presented to our guests. Connor Grant, the Chief Executive Officer of Flutter UK and Ireland. Trevor Birch, the Chief Executive Officer of the EFL. And Paul Farmer, the Chief Executive Officer of Mind. The 36th season of the EFL playoffs. Always guarantee an exciting finale of the season. The national anthem will be performed by Janelle Martin.
edition of the national anthem. As kickoff approaches, a beautiful late spring afternoon at the home of English football. What a sight it is. Set to be a record attendance for a League One playoff final, around 70,000. Let's take a look on the two teams then. Sutherland make one change to the semi-final second leg against Sheffield Wednesday with Elliot Embleton replacing Jack Clark, who drops to the substitutes bench. Lugo Nine spent three years with Wickham before moving to Sunderland in 2018. 4-2-3-1 the formation. Former Manchester City and Celtic winger Patrick Roberts scored the goal that has got Sunderland to this final. But it's Ross Stewart's 25 goals over the season that has been key to the club's hopes of climbing back to the championship. Wickham unchanged from the semi-final success against MK Dons. Anis Mameti is the main absentee. The attacking midfielder still out owing to injury. 4-2-3-1 their formation, the majority of these players were in the team that won the League One playoff final against Oxford just two years ago. But Sam Vokes wasn't in the lineup then, and the experienced Welsh international in his first season with Wickham has weighed in with 17. Important to do with the physicality that Wickham will provide against his team. So he's gone with Elliot Embleton, who'll be more of a presence moving back towards his own goal from a defensive point of view. We know the qualities Clark has, but he's a ball carrier and could be important late on in the match. Sunderland fans happy to see Nathan Broadhead returning from injury. He was on the bench for the semi-final second leg, came on late at Hillsborough in that draw. Just been called up to the Welsh senior squad for the first time, Broadhead. He's in double figures for goals this season has suffered from injuries, but Alex Neal has him in reserve today. Meets his opposite number, Gareth Ainsworth, one of the most easily distinguishable managers in the game. The flag of Ukraine, with the word peace emboldened upon it, as that country still struggles to deal with the war. Ainsworth believes in the mentality of his players. They have the experience of doing it against Oxford in 2020. There were no fans here, but over 20,000 Wickham fans. It's four times their normal average home gate are here to see if they can do it again. Sunderland averaged over 31,000. Magnificent return for home support in the third tier of the English game. A sleeping giant who suffered, remember, I'm sure you recall, back-to-back -back relegations from the Premier League and the Championship. For the fourth time of asking, Sunderland trying to get out of this league. Ross Stewart's form this season earned him a senior call-up by Scotland. He's yet to win his first cap, though. The referee today wants on the books of Swindon Town as a youngster, Simon Hooper. For the first time in an EFL playoff final, we have VAR today, and in charge of that, Tim Robinson. So, Wickham Wanderers get us underway. And the atmosphere electric. Immediately, Pritchard closing down Tafazoli. In a feature of Sunderland season. How well they press from the front, they're very energetic at the high end of the pitch. Gareth Ainsworth will want his team to embroil Sunderland in the kind of game they want today. And the more physical it is, the more you think that will favour Wickham. Sunderland hoping they bring their pass and move game to the table today. And they feel if they do that and play anywhere near their best, they're very well capable of winning. Foul by Obita on Bailey Wright. It's 
Patterson with the goalkeeper is Anthony Patterson. Alex Neal preferring him over the Bayern Munich loony, who was the first choice at the start of the campaign, Ron Torben Hoffman. Patterson, an academy graduate, has done very well since he came in. We have several youngsters in the Sunderland squad, just 22, the goalkeeper. Average age of the Wickham starting 11 is almost 30. Sunderland in their mid 20s. This is Circuit. Promising run from the fullback, and the referee says free kick. Excellent run there by the 20 year old Dennis Circuit, asking questions of Wickham defensively. Refused to be shaken off the ball there by McCarthy. He was caught by Josh Scowan, former Sunderland player wearing 28 for Wickham. An excellent early position here now for Sunderland. Pritchard, we know, is a set piece specialist. Scored a number of free kicks this season. This will be an inviting target for him. Only one man taking this, and there he is, Alex Pritchard. He played under Alex Neal, his current boss, at Norwich. Can he test Stockdale? Yes, he can! And it brushes the side netting. Well, he was peeling away momentarily to celebrate. And his face tells you how close he was. Gets excellent whip on that. Certainly would have asked questions as Stockdale had it been inside the post. That pass just has enough on it. From Danny Bart. going to be grueling conditions baking hot at Wembley temperatures in the low 70s Fahrenheit but at pit side considerably more than that here's Roberts steals away from the veteran Jacobson support in behind from Gooch back with Patrick Roberts room for the shot didn't take it on Pritchard Sunderland starting the stronger here, and it's just out of the reach of Ross Stewart. Puts out his cheeks, he wasn't too far away from getting a, a foot onto this. Flag stayed down, he's certainly onside. Wickham survive. Got a foot to it, but just couldn't guard it inside the post, Stewart. Sunderland with a fast start here, nothing to show for it. Twice they've been close to the opening goal. Can get it over the top of Jacobson. Was he pushed by Roberts? He thought so. Referee didn't. Sunderland throw. Academy graduate Lyndon Gooch to take it. Born in California, used to travel to Sunderland as a 
a youngster in his school holidays for training. All those air miles, well worth it, Gooch. He's uh, 26 years old now, long career at Sunderland. Brought this massive support to the capital. Took over Trafalgar Square last night. Covent Garden was packed, I'm told, as well by red and white. Here's Scour. Room for the pass. Finds McCarthy. Trying to get out under control, Jason McCarthy. Looking, looking to pressurise that Sunderland goal for the first time, but easily gathered by Patterson. Cross meant for Vokes. We know his strength in the air. Sam Vokes, wearing nine for Wickham. Squeeze on here. Jacobson getting the better of Roberts. Like handball, referee says play on. Sunderland in possession. Roberts inviting a run forward here by Pritchard. Whips in an early cross. And McCarthy concedes the throw and happy to do so under pressure from Embleton. No messing around there from Alex Pritchard to get the cross in. Circuit. Roberts got in behind Wickham here, Sunderland circuit. Fourth interception there by Anthony Stewart. This is Gooch. It's too deep. Didn't get enough whip on that, Lyndon Gooch. And it's been pretty much one way traffic towards that Wickham goal. He'd be delighted with the start, Alex Neal. Things with less than pleased with what he's seen up to now. They need all their mental strength, and they have that. Wickham, no question about it. Really right, a little look towards his goalkeeper. Someone throw, or Peter left disappointed. Ten years he's been the Wickham manager, Gareth Ainsworth. Been a real good marriage between him and the club. Lifted forward by Gooch, not very far. Another chance to clear. Stewart hurried into the ball forward by Pritchard. Cleary unable to control that. Wickham, a team who don't generally like to play through the thirds, they keen to get the ball forward from back to front as quick as possible. Stewart, Roberts. Pritchard. Hamilton's cross. Stockdale. I need to get a hand to that. Out for the corner. First corner of the game. Elliot Hamilton delivering the cross. Wasn't going in, but Stockdale not quite sure what was happening in behind him. Made some telling saves in that semi-final second leg against MK Dons. David Stockdale as Alex Pritchard is across to take this Sunderland corner. Which has brought Danny Bart and Bailey Wright forward from the back. To join Ross Stewart.
as Sunderland captain Corey Evans. Port header by Tafazoli. That will be a goal kick. Good work from Dominic Gate. Tafazoli winning an important header there. Just a little bit of breathing space now for Wickham, who've been under the cosh since the opening kick. Alex Neal Sunderland with nothing to show for a very positive and energetic first 11 minutes. Sunderland owner, Kirill Louis Dreyfus. Space opened up here by Hamilton, roared forward by the Sunderland fans and scores! Elliot Hamilton! And you have to say, it's a fully deserved opening goal. It's been a brilliant start. And just look at the reaction at that end of Wembley. Just have a look at the movement on this shot from Hamilton. Feared one way, then the other, then another. Doesn't have to move a lot to see the ball right by his left arm there, but doesn't get enough on it, anywhere near enough, Stockdale. He will, of course, be disappointed. A sea of joyous red and white Sunderland fans. Doing things with, with food for thought already here. Quarter of an hour gone. Jacobson will beat her. Well timed by Wright. This is a nine from a wicked man. Pritchard. Richard chance to pick out Embleton or Stewart in the middle. Stewart, it's an awkward header for him. Picked up by Sirkin. No foul. Referee Hooper right on the spot. Correct decision. But Sunderland looking like a team coming into this League One playoff final unbeaten in 15. That's tasted defeat in February. McCleary. This is Daryl Horgan, the Irishman. And by Gate. Morgan. Looking about a shot from a long way out. This is better from Wickham. Jacobson. Scout. Most meaningful bout of possession from Wickham in the match so far. McCleary. Actually, don't waste time in getting the ball into the box, Wickham. Had an opportunity there, maybe one now. We've got him behind Sunderland for the first time. And it's claimed quite comfortably in the end by Patterson. Cross meant for Vokes at the near post. Wasn't too far out of the reach of Sam Vokes, this. Much better, though, from Wickham. Foul, says the referee, Denise Stewart, on Stewart. Launch forward by Gooch in the general direction of Ross Stewart. This is Roberts. Showing too much of it to Anthony Stewart. McCarthy. 
A little nudge there by Pritchard on gate. And this stadium has been a horror show for Sunderland down the years. Between 1985 and 2019, they failed to win on seven consecutive visits to Wembley. Each of those games, a final of some kind or another. But they won their last one here. Last year's Papa John's Trophy final. No fans here owing to Covid. They beat Tramier Rovers by a goal to nil. Lyndon Gooch scored on the day. It's Elliot Embleton's goal that has the side in red and white in front, and deservedly so. They've been comfortably the better of the two teams up to now. Here's Roberts. Looking fans wanting their players to engage a little quicker. That's better from McCarthy. Evans. That win over Tramia, by the way, in that Papa John's Trophy final for Sunderland ended a 48-year wait for a Wembley win. Even if you weren't around in 1973, I'm sure you've heard about that famous final when then second division Sunderland beat mighty Leeds. McCleary looking for Vokes. He's trying to bully his man there, Sam Vokes, pushing as he did so. He's offside too. A clear offside there against Vokes. Played over a hundred times in the Premier League, Sam Vokes with Norwich and Burnley. Gareth Ainsworth has tied him down to a new deal ahead of this final. A statement of commitment from Vokes, who's played uh, all of his career at a higher level than this. But whatever the outcome, whatever the division they're going to be playing in next season, Sam Vokes will be a Wickham player. Evans. Roberts. Good looking pass. Picks out Corey Evans. This is Ross Stewart. Evans again. Bit of the momentum gone out of the attack. This is Roberts. Pritchard. Straight down the throat of Stockdale without any deviation on the ball to his relief. And every time they go forward. Sunderland look capable and the number of occasions they have already opened up that Wickham defence Stewart has that long ball quickly from back to front leads to nothing and Peter is able to introduce Vokes into that attack The Australian, Bailey Wright. Just on occasions, as you see, Sunderland not averse to going long. Looking for the lanky Stewart, met there by Tafazzoli. What a job he's got, Tafazzoli and Anthony Stewart, to keep Ross Stewart quiet. Had an outstanding season, the Scottish striker. Gooch, Roberts, Wright, Bat, Sirkin, left back on loan from Tottenham, 20 year old Dennis Sirkin who's played a big part in Sunderland season. Roberts, 
scared to commit to challenges here, Wickham. It's not like them, really. They've been unnerved by Sunderland's energy and movement in this opening 23 minutes. Well, we see Wickham close down a lot better than they managed to do so far. Sunderland have allowed them to do so far. Obita. They find a way past Gooch. Covers on from the captain Evans. Lyndon Gooch, who's played in so many positions, the man taking the throw in his Sunderland career. He's not really a right back. So rather filling in there at the moment. Evans in quickly on Horgan. Corey Evans, the Northern Ireland international, the younger brother of Johnny of Leicester City in Northern Ireland. His elder brother once had a loan spell during his Manchester United days with Sunderland. Obita. Daryl Horgan. For McCarthy finding him. This is Gareth McCleary. Not got in the game yet. McCleary is one of the key players for Wickham. There's real quality, but not on that occasion. With 20 caps in his time with Jamaica, 35 years old now. These key players not figuring. So far for Gareth Ainsworth, the likes of McCleary and Vokes. And no set pieces yet for the excellent left foot of the captain, Joe Jacobson. Arguably the best set piece taker, one of the best in League One. Sunderland have not committed any free kicks or corners in and around their penalty area up to now. One of Wickham's real strengths. Damaging the opposition from corners and free kicks. But it's Sunderland who drive forward. Corey Evans. Embleton. Ross Stewart. Room for the shot. Stretches Stockdale into the save. Here's Roberts. Can go either way here, Patrick Roberts. Just edged away by Jacobson. But Stockdale, a pretty routine save, I think, this. He couldn't hold on, he was at enough stretch. Well, maybe he could have got that gathered in, but decided to get it away from goal. Slight deflection on it. Routine stop. He has, as the graphic shows, been considerably the busier of the two goalkeepers. Twenty clean sheets in 51 appearances before today this season for David Stockdale. But beaten by that Elliot Embleton shot. It ends up being the only goal. It won't be a happy night's sleep for Stockdale. I feel it's a shot he should have dealt with. Wickham yet to lay a glove on Sunderland and the goal away to our left. Taken on by Pritchard. Trying to hold off Scourn. Nine. Giving away cheap throw here for Wickham.
Horgan. Bit of time here for Ryan Tapazoli. Not been a, a lot of time on the ball for Wickham in this first half. Sunderland have pressed very well out of possession. Forcing them back here. Scarn looks for the ambitious pass. Drops here for Gape. Now McCleary. Anthony Stewart. Gate. Danny Bart with a clearing header. Almost half an hour gone, the League One player final at Wembley Stadium. Sunderland leading through a goal from Elliot Embleton. Here's Horgan. Up goes Vokes. Well, he got isolated with the player he wanted to be isolated with there, Gooch. Always going to win that against Lyndon Gooch. Got away from the two taller Sunderland centre-backs here, Bart and Wright. That's just what Sam Vokes is looking for, but mistimed the header. Just bullying Gooch there. There's no match for him. Sam Vokes will want more balls in like that. If he gets them, he'll feel he can profit at some stage. Morgan, McCleary, chance to get another cross in here. Blocked by 09. Adebayo Akinfenwa, who turned 40 a few days ago, one of the Wickham substitutes, for whom today will be a final professional game. I'm sure we'll see him at some stage. McCleary offered that up to Pritchard. Excellent pressure there by Ross Stewart, forcing Wickham back to goalkeeper Stockdale. But didn't risk the back pass under pressure from McCleary. Happy to get it out of harm's way. Runs that front line so well, Ross Stewart. And a ball hoisted into that Sunderland box. It's clean hands from Patterson. Really right, just taking the knock. First came to England, Bailey Wright from Australia as a 17-year-old with Preston, had eight years there, three years at Bristol City, 16 months now in the red and white of Sunderland for the Australian international. Patterson without a save of note to make, a couple of crosses to grab, that's all. Roberts, nice back heel to Gooch, looking to run Obita, Lyndon Gooch, Roberts, have a little ball here for Pritchard, Stewart awkward, drift out for a Sunderland corner, near the moment there for Anthony Stewart, ball wasn't far away from a hand here, Got his knee to it, importantly. Get a little ball in from Pritchard, that. An orthodox clearance from Stewart, but effective enough.
Pritchard over the Sunderland corner. A little bit of an altercation between 09 and the goalkeeper Stockdale. Simon Hooper, the referee, having a word with Luke 09, the former Wickham player. His job is to try and apply some pressure on the goalkeeper. Nine's decided to move away now from Stockdale. As Pritchard is set to deliver. Header back in towards Bailey Wright. He doesn't do much with the header. Had more time than he thought there, I think, Wright. Maybe he could have got this down on the chest. In plenty of space there. Danny Bart winning the initial header. Scarn on Roberts. We kick taken quickly, looking for Ross Stewart. Pritchard looking for Ross Stewart again. He can't get there. Importantly for Wickham, Taffer's early did. Horgan. McCarthy under pressure from Embleton. Wickham. Just struggling to breathe here. Under Sunderland's relentless pressing. The outcome today may be the key to this man's future. If Sunderland go up to the championship. I think they'll be around in the red and white. If they don't. It's a question mark over it. Forward by Bart. Looking for Ross Stewart. Over the way well by Tafazoli. This is Gooch. Roberts. Pritchard is free. Been free rather too often from Wickham's point of view. Nice touch from Ross Stewart. Down goes Roberts. Sunderland screen for the penalty. The flag is up for offside. Nervy moments there for Wickham. Patrick Roberts who went down. Remember we've got VAR. But we've also got the assistant on this near side, who is Craig Taylor. And he raised the flag. I think Jacobson got a, a toe on that. But something of Roberts after that. He got enough on the ball initially. Here's McCarthy for Wickham. Three to hit in the middle. Patterson at stretch. Gathers cleanly again. This is Wickham's route to an equaliser. These balls into that Sunderland penalty area. They've not had a corner or a free kick yet. All the high balls into the box have come in open play. When they get those corners and free kicks and they get the big defenders up from the back and they really crowd the goalkeeper and make it so difficult for the opponent. Not had an opportunity yet to do that. Circuit. Tafazoli will go back to Stockdale. And the only downside for Sunderland is that they're not more than 1-0 up. Could be. Twice they were close before the Embleton goal. Wickham just trying to stay in the contest by and large up until half-time. Sunderland fans raise the noise levels again at Wembley.
driven forward by Stockdale. Got defenders up here now. Tafazoli trying to get there. Cleared by Embleton. Gate. McCarthy. Trying to work a crossing position here. McCleary. Losing out to O'Nine, who's in a tight spot. Goes well. With O'Nine. Always been a, a big favourite with the Sunderland fans. Very engaging character. Approaching the final five minutes of the first half of the EFL League One playoff final. For the right to join League One champions this season, Wigan and Rotherham United in the championship next season. Carthy is making sure we've got enough on that back pass to Stockdale. Stewart, 09, can't punch it through to Pritchard. Cut out by Scar. McCarthy. McCleary. Soft and Wickham driven backwards. This is Tafazoli. Jacobson. Vita making a run. Jacobson eventually finding Jordan Vita. for Telling Cross. Huge. Remarkable to think that these two, two teams had never played each other in a competitive match before the 2018-19 season. But facing off here today for the seventh time each of the previous six meetings in League One for the record those six meetings brought two Sunderland wins three draws and that's so Wickham success no arguing about the merits of a Sunderland lead at the moment Roberts running a throw Goes Wickham's way. And two Sunderland defenders for the same ball there, right and back. First time we've seen a sign of nerves at the back from the team in red and white, back and right. Enjoying a handshake, but they didn't enjoy that fleeting few seconds. Look at that. Lack of understanding, and Gooch almost presented it to Vokes. First sign of Sunderland unease as we approach half time. Bailey Wright. Roberts. Lovely feet from Patrick Roberts. Can he pick the pass? Short to Pritchard. Pritchard's foul. Denies Roberts the chance to attack that Wickham penalty area. Jason McCarthy, the man down. Pritchard is proving tough to pick up, playing in that role just behind Ross Stewart. Wokes with a header. Only going to be a minimum of one minute to be added on once we get to 45. 
Tafazzoli. Beach. I'm sure he was touch tight there to Obita. Here's Horgan. Obita's ball in, no pressure. And Daly right to clear. Foul by Ross Stewart. Now a chance for Wickham to bring the big men forward from the back. Joe Jacobson with a set piece here. And his set pieces are normally very accurate. Sunderland know the Wickham threat from these positions. And they've been working on them all week. Not much for the 20,000 plus Wickham fans to cheer so far. Maybe something now. In by Jacobson. Into a great area, and it's an excellent header by Stewart. The final touch came off Gareth McCleary, but it was a great delivery from Jacobson. That left foot is so, so accurate. And Ross Stewart doing a good job inside his own penalty area there. Sunderland's top scorer this season. Important marking there on McCleary. So we are into that one additional minute. Pritchard looking for Embleton. Carthy's there first. Dennis Sirkin, the Tottenham Looney, will take the throw. That made a senior appearance for Spurs, only 20. Approaching referee Simon Hooper's half-time whistle here. We've had the one extra minute. There's a nine, runs the ball out. Good offer that, though, from O9. This will be the last kick, surely, of the first half. Indeed it is. Alex Neal will be delighted with Sunderland's first-half performance. 46,000 Sunderland fans are delighted with it. Elliot Embleton, with the only goal so far, is shot with a vicious swerve, several directions it took on its way to Stockdale, and he was deceived. Stockdale's made a couple of saves aside from that. Sunderland have been, by a measure, the better of the two sides, and in no way flattered by the half-time score. The EFL League One playoff final of 2022 at Wembley. Jacobson's left foot. Saw it in the first half when he almost put a delicious free kick onto the head of Gareth McCleary. An early second-half chance to pressurise the Sunderland goal here. Neither side have made any changes in personnel at half-time. Wickham going with the same 11 from the two legs of the semi-final win over MK Dons. Jacobson, the Wickham captain then. Whips it in, not enough height on that though. Are we going to see a different story in terms of the flow of this second half? Can confirm a yellow card as well. First of the game went to Dennis Serkin. Not entirely sure why. It's his challenge there. Has a little nervy look at the referee. And they're asking for another yellow here. No, says Simon Hooper. Certainly caught McCleary. It was a rather nervy look from Serkin to referee Hooper. Kept his cards in his pocket. Genuine attempt for the ball, but it was a foul. But not unworthy of a yellow card, said Hooper. But another opportunity for Jacobson to swing in a free kick. Good early pressure here from Wickham. Not impossible, but he could whip it straight for goal here, Jacobson. 
Try and put a disguise on it here to deceive Patterson. Goalkeeper showing a lot. To the goalkeeper's right as we look. Jacobson's had a little look in that direction. Goes for the cross and safely punched away by Patterson. Flag up for offside. Yeah, that's where uh, Sirkin picked up the yellow card for the shirt pull, spotted by referee Hooper. Referee siding with the Sunderland left back there. That was borderline, wasn't it? Gooch. Nice touch from Roberts. Taken on by Lyndon Gooch. And the kind of panicked in possession there. Wickham have struggled with the pace and the energy. The Sunderland attacks. Joe Jacobson's had a fine career, but he's 36 years old now, the Wickham captain. 35, I beg your pardon, but he's not far short of 36. Gareth McCleary in his mid 30s. These cloying conditions at Wembley. Very warm day. The sun's dipped in, but still warm down there. Tiredness will play its part. Of course, we have the provision for 30 minutes extra time should it be needed and penalties to decide it. Sunderland have lost all three of their previous playoff finals. One against Swindon, and two against Charlton. Here's McCarthy. Good run from the fullback. Stabbed away by Bart. Statement of intent here from Wickham in the early minutes of the second half. In by Horgan. Thornton header there by Bart. And it is a different picture of the first five minutes of the second half or anything to go by. Sunderland now being pressed back. Scar. Stewart. Poor header by Bart. Sunderland managed to recycle possession. Pritchard. Just wanting to slow it down a little bit now, the team in red and white. But then they try to pick the tempo up with Embleton. That Sunderland playoff final defeat I mentioned against Swindon did have a happy ending, you may recall, back in the early 90s. Sunderland lost the final here at Wembley 1 0, but Swindon were prevented from going up to the top flight that season, owing to them being found guilty of financial irregularities. So Sunderland were promoted instead. This ground has been a real curse to these fans down the years. Maybe a happier outcome today. So far, so good for them. This is the goal scorer Embleton, now Pritchard. Room for the cross if he wants. With the tease, Stewart. Then delivered by Pritchard, and the header wide. Real good chance for Roberts. Stewart was on the premises too, and who got there first? Might have been Ross Stewart in the end. Roberts was in behind. Delicious ball in by Pritchard. Let's see who got the header. Yeah, it was Ross Stewart. It was only, what, less than a metre away from that post. Roberts driving at the Wickham defence. Well-timed challenge from Anthony Stewart. McCleary. McCarthy wanting it in his travel. Here is Jason McCarthy. Blocked by Bart.
an absorbing League One playoff final. Sunderland deserving of their lead, but Wickham showing in the minutes we've had since half time what we expect from them. Horgan, McCleary. Cleary fouling Pritchard. Wickham are going to make a change, the first substitution of the game. Lewis Wing is going to be coming on for Daryl Horgan momentarily. There is Lewis Wing. Just to play for Middlesbrough, one of Sunderland's northeast rivals. 22 before he made his Football League debut with Middlesbrough. Non league player in the North East prior to that. Signed by Wickham last January. But Wickham was certainly happy to see that Ross Stewart header fly just wide of the post. 2 0 for Sunderland then. It might have been too much for Wickham to retrieve. That change wing for Horgan will happen now, I think. Sunderland quickly about the free kick though, so the substitution will have to wait. Oh nine, Pritchard, lovely little pass to Embleton. Oh, and he had Roberts free wide. He went for the shorter pass to Ross Stewart there. Sunderland showed absolutely no nerves at the start of this League One playoff final. They went for the throat, went right at Wickham, stepped on to them right from the opening kick. Bailey Wright, Gooch, good looking pass here for Ross Stewart, Anthony Stewart will see that good down off the touch of Ross Stewart, now Wickham will make that change. Off will come Daryl Horgan, Galway Bonn, disappointment written all over his face, you can understand that, early minutes of the second half, Lewis Wing, his replacement got a goal in him wing. It's an excellent shot from long distance. Ten minutes gone in the second half. McCarthy with the Wickham throw. Here's McCarthy, McCleary. Over the head of Obita, do well to keep that in, can't do so. Theory much more involved in the game now. It's important from Wickham's point of view. Stewart just looking for some good service. He got it here though from Pritchard. This is how close he was. Sunderland fans behind that goal had an excellent view of that. side against Vokes not had a clear chance yet Sam Vokes but he'll wait his moment looks like Jack Clark might be with us shortly Looking unlucky to lose his place for this final played very well in the semi-final second leg at Sheffield Wednesday Clark
very good ball carrier. McCarthy. Clear foul by Jacobson. Deceived by the touch of Roberts. Tricky customer, isn't he, Patrick Roberts? Once on the books of Manchester City and a very good spell, I remember it. Celtic probably hasn't really delivered on what they thought. And he's coming through at Manchester City. He's 25 now, Patrick Roberts, looking to revive his career somewhat after a failed loan spell at uh, French club Troyes. Here he is, Roberts. Very effective, though. Left-footed player coming in off that right flank. Lyndon Gooch with the throw. And senior caps for the USA, Gooch. Tafazoli. I understand the goal scorer Elliot Embleton is going to be the player replaced by Clark for Sunderland shortly. Anthony Stewart didn't really get hold of that cross, but it's awkward here. Drops for Vokes. Important save by Patterson for the relief of Bailey Wright, who completely misjudged the bounce of that. It was a miscued cross from Anthony Stewart here. Didn't really get hold of it, but watch Bailey Wright here. Underneath, Patterson bails his centre back out. His heart would have dropped there, Bailey Wright, when he saw Vokes in space. Didn't get it under his spell quick enough, and Patterson got to him. First big chance there for Wickham. Substitution then, goal scorer Elliot Embleton going off. But Alex Neal's decision to start Embleton certainly paid off. The academy graduate delivering for 46,000 Mackhams today. And on to replace him. Comes Jack Clark. On loan from Tottenham. Clark, only 21, came through at Leeds, you may remember. Tottenham paid £10 million to Leeds for his signature. Forward by Wright. Pritchard is not in the game as much, and that's good news for Wickham. I think they have closed those spaces down between defence and midfield. Jacobson not quite sure the goalkeeper Stockdale was getting there. Scown, former Sunderland player. Under hits the pass. Picked up by Gooch. Wants the free kick, Lyndon Gooch. Not getting it. This is Tapazoli. Stewart, McCarthy, Wing, excellent Sunderland press, Captain Corey Evans doing a good job there for his team. Getting to the stage now where the players will be feeling it, not just a physical test this but a mental one right poor ball from Bailey Wright one or two questioning looks from his teammates another change for Wickham 
This is Brandon Hanlon, who's been out injured recently. Forward player. So, so he'll be with us shortly. Can throw. McCleary. McCarthy. Lots of Wickham possession in the second half. Haven't really tested Patterson yet. Just that one save, really. And he got to Sam Vokes. It was an important save. Good opportunity, though, for Vokes if he got the ball. Under control a little quicker. They've got a firmer shot away, and then one he eventually managed. The Wickham threat is building. Jordan Obita is the man who's going to make way shortly for Brandon Hanlon. That will be the Wickham change. Stewart can swing this in. Folks with a header down, Wing trying to get there, cleared by Pritchard. Sunderland desperate for a bit of possession here. Gooch has done enough up against Vokes. He won't be in any hurry over this throw, Lyndon Gooch. As we can make that change, Hanlon for Obita. Seen a great deal of Jordan Obita in this final. Gareth Ainsworth hoping we'll see a lot of Brandon Hanlon between now and the end of 90 minutes. First season at the club, having left Bristol Rovers. His former club promoted from League Two in dramatic fashion on the final day with that 7 0 home win against Scunthorpe. It broke the hearts of Northampton, who were winning their final game at Barrow, thinking they'd done enough to get up. Then there was that dramatic goal swing between the two clubs, and it's Bristol Rovers who went up. Northampton went on to lose in the playoffs, agonising for them. Here's Corey Evans. Didn't see the man on, who was wing. McCleary winning these 50-50s now, Wickham. It's what they do so well, they found energy, they found belief. Pritchard is feeling something out there. <laughs> Bailey Wright, no measured pass this time, picks out Roberts, running at Jacobson. He looks uneasy when Roberts attacks him. Pritchard wants it. This is Pritchard. Roberts will be beat to that by McCarthy. Offside, Wickham. Gooch. Roberts gets away from Hanlon. Pritchard. Tussle between Roberts and Jacobson. Plenty of experience, Joe Jacobson, but he's a tricky customer, Roberts. He's enjoying that duel. I think both are, up to an extent. Roberts is getting the better of it. Pritchard, trying to win himself a corner if he can. One thing you could say about Sunderland since Alex Neal came in in February is how much he stiffened them up defensively. 
once seen as a bit of a, an easy touch by opponents. He did concede goals under Lee Johnson's tenure. Been a lot better at the back since the change in manager, and in goes Roberts. Sunderland asks for a penalty. Simon Hooper says no. VAR, headed by Tim Robinson, will be having a look at it. My first feeling is it's not a penalty. Caught between two, Stewart and Jacobson, Patrick Roberts. Corner given by the on-pitch referee, VAR, reviewing it. Do Sunderland have a claim for a penalty here? Caught in between two, Patrick Roberts. Tim Robinson having several looks at this. Is there enough in the challenge from Jacobson? Corner only, check over. Pritchard to take. Danny Bart unable to do much with the header. Sunderland fans not happy. The side wasn't given a penalty. From my point of view, for what it's worth, I don't think it was. I think Alex Neal, if it had been given against his team, would have been aggrieved. But there was certainly an element of risk from the two defenders who had to take the risk. With Patrick Roberts bearing down on goal. Oh nine. Up towards Ross Stewart. Header on's a good one for Clark. Good position here for the substitute, Jack Clark. Stewart attacks the near post. Important touch by the former Sunderland man, Josh Gowan. Asking for more further up the pitch, Gowan, but an important position he took up here. Stewart wins the header, and Clark tried to find Ross Stewart at the near post. Scowan has conceded the corner. Sunderland weathered that Wickham pressure, such as it was at the start of the second half. The first 15 minutes or so of this second half, Patterson only having one important save of note to make in that time. Now Sunderland looking to stretch their lead give themselves breathing space, in by Pritchard, free header here Ross Stewart time to bring it down he wants a corner nothing doing but the space Ross Stewart had there, Sunderland bench looking really unhappy, they didn't get a corner out of that but poor marking by Wickham from the initial corner put up against Pritchard Wickham send Tapazoli forward. Anthony Stewart will think about going forward, and he does. So the two centre backs make their way up to that Sunderland penalty area. Launched in by Stockdale. Clark under pressure from McCarthy. Pritchard fouled by Gate. Did well to get his body in front of Gate there, Alex Pritchard. Looks like he needs a bit of a rest. Well, the League One playoff final has never seen an attendance like today's. A wonderful 72,332 for the third tier of English football. Remarkable. In large part down to 46,000 hordes who've made it down from the northeast. To support Sunderland. What a fan base. Ross Stewart. And incidentally, Sunderland asked for 10,000 more tickets and were refused them. Clark, Pritchard. Clark again made room. Eventually, it's cleared by Gate. Looks like he's gone down with Cramp there. Dominic Gate. Yes, Cramp, you could see it. He's mouthing Cramp. So we'll need some attention here. And a lot of 
running to do, particularly in that first half. Now Sunderland passed around the two central midfield players, Gate and Scown, with a message from Gareth Ainsworth. Picked up from the touchline. Being devoured by Vokes and McCleary. Now by Wing. for Stewart and Scowan. We'll just zoom in a little further, we can see what was written on there. Well, it's Adebayo, Akinfenwa time. But the noise is from the Sunderland end. Dominic Gate, his day is at an end. And the remarkable Adebayo Akinfenwa will make his way into this League One playoff final. At the age of 40, his last professional game. Will it yet end in victory? 754 career appearances for 10 clubs, 221 goals. Played in four finals, four promotions. And you don't need me to tell you what presence he brings to the front line for Wickham. Sunderland have some considerable defending to do from here on in. The high balls will be coming in and coming in and raining down on that Sunderland goal for the 15 minutes or so that remain. Yellow card to Pritchard. Be a full back on Scone. In Fenway, wins his first header. Away by Evans. Caught an interception there by Tampazoli. Back in Fenway, shuffle it out wide enough. McCleary, he's done well. Back in Fenway, short of Gareth McCleary. Sunderland desperate for some possession here, can't get it. Wickham being roared on by the 22,000 or so supporters in the end away to our right. Win by Jacobson. Another one by Sirkin. No need for Wickham to panic yet. There's time enough for an equaliser. Tapazoli. Here's Roberts. Tafazoli will get there ahead of Ross Stewart. Cleared by Stockdale. Oh nine. Evans. Bailey Wright. Good steal by Jacobson. Sleeping a little bit there, Roberts. Jacobson launches it in towards Vokes. Too high. Just a little too hasty, I felt there by Jacobson. He had a few more meters to drive into. Not only was the cross above Vokes, but he was offside anyway. The Welsh international and Sunderland breathe a little easier. They had chances to be further in front. These Wickham fans still believe. down from the championship their first ever season in the second tier Wickham came down with a tally of points which would have kept them up in the championship this season 
end of the League One regular season, you have to feel sorry for Oxford. 80 points and outside the playoffs. And only once since the League One gained its current name has that happened. It nearly serves to underline the consistency of the teams that finished in the top six. Tafazoli getting the better of Stewart. Hanlon has done well against Gooch. He's done really well here. Brandon Hanlon! Oh, he had a pass on into the middle. Went for glory, the substitute. And it looked like pretty much a back pass into the grateful gloves of Patterson. But he shook off one. Got the better of a second. Then he's got a pass on. But he was greedy. Good opening squandered by Hanlon. Pritchard. Roberts. Roberts finding Pritchard. Ross Stewart. Yes! And surely that's the goal that will end Sunderland's agony. The Premiership under his stewardship. Down goes Ross Stewart. It's not a foul. He knew it. Didn't really appeal for it either. Great reception of the ball there by Akin Fenwa. But three red and white shirts around him, nowhere to go. And plenty of room now for Sirkin. Sunderland looked like they've still got plenty of energy. Corey Evans presented that to McCarthy. Can drive at the Sunderland penalty area. Jason McCarthy can't find the pass. Cut out by Doyle. Wickham fans fearing the worst, but hoping, praying almost, that they can find two goals. Not really tested Anthony Patterson in the Sunderland goal much at all. Credit to the team in red and white for the way they defended these high balls up to now. Collected by Stewart. Here's Gooch. Lovely ball down the line here. It's Patrick Roberts. Chance to get the shot away! And just wide of the post. Claiming deflection. Stockdale at full stretch in case it was creeping inside his far post here from the left foot of Patrick Roberts. Did he have a pass on there? Maybe not. Anthony Stewart was getting back on the cover, but it's a whisker away from 3-0. How much have Wickham got left? McCarthy. Scone. Tafazoli. Headed down from Vokes. Red and white shirt there first. Well, Wickham prided themselves on being gate crashes to any party down the years they did it to get into the playoffs this season only on the final day of the regular season with a, a gate crash Sunderland's party they need to get about their work quickly we're inside the last five minutes of normal time drops here for McCarthy a goal now make for a nervous last few minutes for Sunderland shot on here and deflected away might have been on target Corey Evans the captain in the way goalkeeper already diving to his left Patterson might have saved it anyway but it is a Wickham corner Sunderland are getting ready Nathan Broadhead the Everton low knee a striker 
Meantime, Wickham with a corner. I haven't had too many of these today in a way off the gloves of Patterson. Anthony Stewart, good position, he's worked here. Patterson getting his gloves on that. Nathan Broadhead for Ross Stewart is going to be the Sunderland change. But Anthony Stewart just couldn't work that position. Eighty seventh minute. Hanlon, can he outrun Gooch? He's done well, Brandon Hanlon. Cross comes 09. Desperate for a goal here, Wickham. Gareth McCleary. Evans there again, he's had an excellent game. Gets through a lot of the dirty work, Corey Evans. Fought and blocked for his team there. And on will come Nathan Broadhead, only recently back from injury to replace Sunderland's player of the season. 26 goals, another on the big occasion here today. The goal that's given Sunderland breathing space. Not much of a chance, was it? He worked the position so well. He could criticise the defending of Anthony Stewart. There's a man who knew how to put the ball in the back of the net. Two former Sunderland managers, now Quinn and Peter Reid watching on. Here's McCarthy. Just a little hasty there, Jason McCarthy with the cross. Well, he's in double figures. He's had an excellent loan season with Sunderland, Nathan Broadhead, an Everton player. Seen his parent club survive. Close one thing. Well, he went to the final day for Frank Lampard and company. Just been called up to the senior Welsh squad, by the way, Broadhead. Alex Neal saying, come on, still a couple of minutes or so to go. Sunderland chairman watches on. But they're edging closer and closer. The capital has belonged to Sunderland fans. Wickham fans, of course, only had to make the 30 mile or so journey south to Wembley Stadium. Sunderland fans have been here, many of them, since Friday. Here's McCleary. Get the cross in, yes he can. Plenty of Sunderland bodies there though. And they just can't make those crosses work. Sunderland defending diligently once more. And we're heading to the 90th minute. Just game management now for the team in red and white. And they will be home to the big prize. And the start of the rebirth of the giant that is Sunderland AFC. The man who's finally unlocked the door, it would seem, to partial revivement. Still feel they should be mixing it in the Premier League, and maybe it won't be too long before they're doing so again. Hanlon. Red and white shirts blocking the route to a cross. Scout. McCleary will try and work a crossing position here. Teasing one in and back in Fenware. Couldn't get enough on the volley. And we've got a minimum of five minutes remaining. The last five minutes of Veo Akin Fenwar's professional career. Nearly had a goal to get his side back into it. Evans. It's 
calm possession football from Sunderland. They could have just booted it long there. Clark, can he find a way through here? Jack Clark denied by Stockdale. Glorious chance there for the substitute Clark. Oh nine in with a strong challenge. Felt like a goal to Luke O9 that tackle. Important save there from Stockdale to deny Clark. Three and a half minutes for Wickham to find two goals. Scown. This is McCleary. Gooch sticking to his task. Josh Scarn can't get it through, but it drops here for Hanlon. Excellent challenge by Danny Bart. Clark could be in here. Stockdale, long way out of his penalty area. Needs to be careful there, and did very well. But there's no pressure on that Sunderland back line. We're in the third of the five extra minutes. I don't think even the most ardent Wickham fan could argue that Sunderland have been the better of the two teams. They've played all the football that's mattered here today. None of the match being announced there. Alex Pritchard, who was substituted a little earlier, had a fine game, particularly in the first half when Wickham struggled to deal with his movement off Ross Stewart. So many times in their previous playoff finals, Sunderland fans have lived on their nerves. It looks as though it's going to be a nerveless final moments here as they're two up into the fourth of the five extra minutes. Wickham have tried, but they've not had enough craft guile to break a solid Sunderland defence down. Sunderland with the opportunity and Alex Neal will take that opportunity he's only been in since February a lot of these players are not his players of course but he'll be looking to deal in the transfer market if they go up to the championship of course they'll be able to attract better quality players everybody wants to play for a big club and Sunderland are exactly that and they are now a little over a minute away from the championship McCleary it's going to happen for Wickham, this dramatic comeback, it has to happen now. No foul, says a well-positioned referee. Clip forward by Gooch. Sunderland fans asking for the full-time whistle, it's only... 40 seconds away, they can breathe easy, they've done enough. Hooked forward by 09. Stand by in a few moments' time for one of the biggest roars you'll have heard at Wembley for many a long year. Alex Neal has unlocked the door to Sunderland's frustration, Sunderland's agony, Sunderland's four years in League One. But these fans have finally seen the players and the manager that has ended the agony. Sunderland return to the Championship. Three months after walking through the door at the Stadium of Light. Full credit to Alex Neal and his staff for the job that they've done. These players who've not tasted defeats in February played to a game plan. The game plan has worked. Only one defeat in 18 games. Wow, says Peter Reid, the former Sutherland manager. It's a fully deserved victory. 
Dawson Elliott Hamilton in the first half, Ross Stewart in the second. It's no dream ending to his professional career for Bayo Akin Fenwa, who bows out at the age of 40. Look what it means to Niall Quinn, whose son was born in Sunderland, who's a Sunderland supporter. Niall Quinn joked to his son, couldn't you support a Chelsea or a Liverpool? Why does it have to be Sunderland? Well, why not? And right now, today, it feels a good decision from Quinn Jr. Sporting hug between Akin Fenwa and Bailey Wright. Wickham tried all he knew, but they just didn't have enough. Sunderland in and out of possession. We're top dogs today. There's tears, there's smiles, there's relief all around that Sunderland end. 46,000. They wanted more here. They weren't allowed the extra tickets. These players have formed a real bond with Alex Neal. For Gareth Ainsworth, he's done such a great job with Wickham. Wasn't to be today. They were second best in all departments. And so, it is Sunderland who shortly will stride up to receive the League One playoff final trophy. They're heading for the championship. It's going to be a big party. Final score at Wembley. Sunderland 2, Wickham Wanderers 0. He's a hard worker, Alex Neal puts in a lot of hours, a lot of homework, and it's paid off. No nonsense manager, I think you put him in that category. Players know what his game plan is, know his demands. Joe Jacobson, the Wickham captain, just congratulating Bailey Wright. But look at these scenes. And if he didn't know, and I'm sure he does know what a big club Sunderland are, he knows it now. Alex Neal, as he looks at that sea of red and white at that end of Wembley. For every winner, there has to be a loser. You feel for Wickham, who's striven hard during a punishing 46 game regular season having just come down last season from the championship they were desperate to get straight back but came up against the Sunderland team bang in form unbeaten in 15 and you could see why today very good in and out of possession Young players in this squad as well, young players who are only going to get better. Young players that are coming on loan, Nathan Broadhead from Everton. Will he be back in red and white next season? Dennis Serkin, 20-year-old left-back on loan from Tottenham, will he be back? Jack Clark on loan from Spurs. What about his future? Spurs look set to loan him out again next season. Maybe a second season in red and white. All still to be determined. But for now, the party has begun both here at Wembley, and you can be assured on Wearside. Don't expect too many of those Sunderland fans home early. They turned Trafalgar Square and Covent Garden as they always do for their Wembley visits, and they've been here plenty of times in recent years. Sea of red and white in those two parts of London. Jordan Willis there in shot who's been out virtually all season with injury, experienced centre-back. But they had the flair players, didn't they? The Patrick Roberts, Elliot Embleton, Jack Clark when he came on. 
Alex Pritchard, who was finding those little pockets of space in the first half in between the Wimbledon, uh, Wickham rather, defence and midfield. And he just couldn't deal with the movement, the pace and the energy of the Sunderland attacks. Could have been more than one down at half-time, Wickham. They weren't, stayed in the game. Had a good opening 15 minutes to the second half when they pressed Sunderland back. One big chance for Sam Vokes that he couldn't take. But Sunderland had energy towards the end. Took the game once more to Wickham. And once Ross Stewart got the second goal, it was game over. Two youngsters there, Sirkin and Doyle, 20 and 18 respectively. Big moment in their young careers. The club they are both on loan with. It's going to be a very interesting summer now for Alex Neal and the Sunderland hierarchy. With a lot of criticism, rightly so, for mismanagement off the pitch that saw them drop out of the Premier League and straight out of the Championship, back-to-back -back relegations. But the good times have returned. And maybe about to get even better in the 12 months or so to come. Corey Evans, something of an unsung hero, not always a favourite with Sunderland fans, I can tell you. But since Alex Neal walked through the door, he has grown in stature, not the only one. The captain certainly played his part today. The League One playoff final trophy will shortly be in his grasp. Worked really hard at the base of that midfield. the youngsters that Sunderland have in their ranks but they've got experience through the spine as well you look at the two centre-backs Bailey Wright, Danny Bart, Evans in midfield Ross Stewart not much experience in English football but played at Ross County up in Scotland and uh, just shown his quality since he came down to England Stewart there he is wearing that we're going up flag around his shoulders had broad shoulders, the responsibility for the goals this season. My goodness, how he's returned with 26. Enjoys that nickname of the Loch Ness Drogba. Certainly some monster goals to help his team up to the championship. It's a long old walk. The legs of the Sunderland players will not be feeling this. It was hard to see a weakness in any department of the Sunderland team today. It's Aidan McGeady who's had a long spell out with injury, the experienced former Republic of Ireland international. Wonder what his future has in store in the summer. Luke O'Nine, the former Wickham player, wearing one of the broader smiles. Man of the match, Alex Pritchard. Goalkeeper Anthony Patterson, who didn't have a great deal to do today, he made one crucial save to deny Sam Vokes in the second half. found the key to the door, a stubborn door that has refused to open for Sunderland in four years in League One. Forty-six thousand Sunderland supporters waiting to greet their heroes here. 
they make their way up for the trophy. Alex Neal, the man to kickstart Sunderland's resurgency, he's woken up the sleeping giant after arguably the bleakest period in the club's history. Embrace for his captain, Corey Evans. He knows the importance of the captain's job. Australian Bailey Wright has been in great form. Hug there from Jim Montgomery, the legendary Sunderland goalkeeper. Star of that 1973 FA Cup final victory over the mighty then Leeds United. You can't break the smiles from players and fans alike here. One final commiseration to Wickham. Brave effort from Gareth Ainsworth and his players. But Wembley belongs to Sunderland AFC. Back where they feel they belong for now. And maybe not too long before they're back where they really be believe they belong. And that's in the Premier League. 46,000 Mackhams celebrate with Corey Evans and the players. It's Sunderland's day at Wembley. League One playoff final winners 2022 beating Wickham Wanderers by two goals to nil.